Hi everyone, this is Michael here from Wild and Happy Travel. I'm going to be sharing with you today our free Wild and Happy Travel guide to Killarney. If you haven't already done so, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell below. So let's get into our destination. So Killarney, it's based in the southwest of Ireland in what we call the County of Kerry, also known as the Kingdom of Kerry because of its beauty. Killarney gets its name from meaning the Church of Slows. The slowberry comes from the blackthorn bush. In 2022, Killarney's population is approximately 14,000 people, which makes it quite small. But come here in the summer months, you'll see a vibrant, vibrant town. So Killarney's amazing geology and history goes a way, way back in time before even humans were here. So I'd have to bring you back about 350 million years ago. You wouldn't have found Ireland where it is today. In fact, it was beneath the equator. It's rock type, it's old red sandstone, but combined with something else. And that's what we call limestone. This gives rise to unique flora and fauna that you'll find in abundance in our national park. So when we come to history in Killarney, we have just a wealth. From early civilizations, we would have had a Bronze Age. You know, going back 2000 BC, you would have had people wandering around on Ross Island. And they were there for a reason. And that's because they were digging into the ground. They were looking for something. And when you dig into limestone, you're going to find a little bit of copper. So learning from the early civilizations of combining copper and tin, of course, they created bronze. And this bronze used by our Celtic ancestors would have been donned upon their bodies from necklaces, chains, you name it. They looked absolutely beautiful. From then, we have the arrival of early Christianity. And roughly speaking, 5th century onwards, they would have set up little sanctuaries throughout Ireland and they would have looked for isolated areas. And we have one of the greatest examples you're ever going to see, and that's on Inish Fallon Island, which is an early Christian settlement. Ruins still there to this day from the 9th up to the 13th century. It's an absolutely magical place. And the best way to get out there is either by boat or if you feel up to an adventure, a kayak trip out of this absolutely beautiful island that's isolated, you'll feel like you're back in time. And after a relatively peaceful time with our early Christian settlements, then we have the arrival of our Vikings. Now the Vikings, not everybody's cup of tea. Of course, they were friendly in some respects, but not so friendly in others. And they would have loved these little islands of early Christian settlements because what they thought they would find there were a hoard of gold and treasures to bring to Valhalla. They were a little bit disappointed when they got there. All they found were monks dressed in cloth with very little possessions. So not all was bad with our Viking brothers. They brought good looks to us. They also brought freckles, red hair, and the ability to build ships. So moving on from our Viking brothers, of course, we would have had the arrival of Normans in Ireland. Now, Normans isn't a ship full of people called Norman. They would have been people who would arrived over with the concept of castles. And of course, castles you'll find right throughout Ireland. And one of the most beautiful castles that you can still see to this day is a 15th century castle built by the O'Donoghue Moors, which sits right on the edge of the lakes of Killarney. Absolutely majestic setting overlooking the Inishfallen Island and the mountains of Killarney. Ross Castle, which was built by the Udonum Hoor clan in 1453, they also built Muckras Abbey, which is an absolutely majestic abbey that sits right in the heart of the Muckras area in the Killarney National Park. Next door to that is, of course, Muckras House, an absolutely majestic building built by the Herbert family. And in fact, it housed the visit of Queen Victoria in 1861. And she had a major effect on Killarney in terms of its tourism identity. And nowadays we can even go back and look at the influence of that from our horse carriage to our boat trips on the lakes of Killarney. And you can get to experience all of these even nowadays. So there are many ways to get to Killarney. Number one, you can fly, believe it or not, to Killarney. You can arrive in a beautiful village called Farnfor, which is approximately 20 minutes from Killarney town. Number two, getting to Killarney, of course, is by train. 
from Dublin. It's around about three and a half hours of a train journey down to the beautiful Midlands of Ireland. If you arrive at Kerry Airport, you can get the train from Farn 4, which is a short ride of approximately 20 minutes into Killarney Town. You can take a train from Cork, which is only approximately an hour and a half away. So you can also hire a car from all the major airports in Ireland that will bring you straight to Killarney. Just remember, stay on the left hand side. And if you don't fancy taking the train, a plane or car, you can equally take the bus to Killarney. There are many ways of getting around Killarney. One of them, of course, being my favorite is the bicycle. And that means you can get off the beaten track and explore some of the most beautiful secluded areas of Killarney National Park. You can also drive out to Muckers Estate where there's a free car park. From there, you can explore Muckers Gardens and Estate and also Torque Waterfall and Muckers Abbey. Lastly, if you really feel of interest, you can take one of the oldest forms of travel in Killarney and that is the horse and cart. An absolutely beautiful way to experience Ireland's first national park. So for food lovers, Killarney caters for all dietary needs. If you're a vegetarian, vegan, or even if you're a carnivore, you're gonna be spoiled for choice. So if you want to combine your food experience with a nice drink in a cozy warm pub, where you'll also find Crack August Kjol. Crack meaning fun in the Gaelic language, and Kjol meaning music. And that's what you'll find every single night of the week in Killarney. So you can't come to Killarney without having an experience. And oh my gosh, do we have experiences lined up for you. You can kayak on the lakes of Killarney. You can hike to Torque Mountain overlooking the lakes of Killarney, or take a hike up onto Ireland's highest mountain, Carran Tool. Lastly, how about taking a boat trip across the three lakes of Killarney to arrive at the Gap of the Low, where you can take a walk, cycle, or even take a rock climbing adventure in this majestic valley. The Gap of the Low is one of many attractions that you can experience in Killarney. You can also visit Ross Island and Castle, which we mentioned earlier as the 15th century castle. You can also visit Killarney House and Gardens, which is situated in the center of the town. Muckras House and Estate, where there you'll find a wonderful 19th century estate and equally the home of Muckras Abbey, which is a 15th century abbey. So what is the currency that we use in Killarney? It's the Euro, and you can use that in all shop venues, wherever you go to it. And you can also use your credit card. How do I change my money? Well, you can go to a number of venues. Uh, number one, bank. Banks are usually open from 10 to four, uh, Monday to Friday. Or you can go to what we call a post office, and there you can exchange your monies. Do you tip in Killarney? Well, yes, it's very much appreciated if you do. It's really up to your discretion on how much you give, but my recommendation will be anything between 10 and 15%. So what kind of weather to expect in Killarney? Well, Killarney, being a temperate climate, you're gonna find everything from sunshine, wind, and rain. Now, to dispel the myth that it rains all the time in Killarney, it doesn't. In fact, from spring to summer, we have beautiful weather and where you can expect to see lush green fields, absolutely glorious landscapes. From kind of November onwards until February, that's where you're gonna expect the kind of more wilder side of Killarney. So from wind, rain, but equally the most majestic rainbows you'll ever see in your life. My recommendation would be check the weather before you arrive because you could be experiencing really hot weather to really cold weather. So definitely check online. So what to pack for Killarney? Well, that will definitely depend on what you want to experience. So if you are into the outdoors, most definitely pack rain gear in terms of a rain jacket, trousers, gloves, hat, and even a nice warm fleecy top. If you're planning to be indoors, either eating in a restaurant or going to different events, well, my recommendation will be, you know, rest nicely, lightly. So what are people like in Killarney? Well, what you're going to get, first of all, is a kid meal of falcha, which means a hundred thousand welcomes. We're renowned, us Irish and people in Killarney, for being very, very friendly and giving you the time of day. What type of accommodation to expect in Killarney? Well, Killarney being the hub of accommodation venues in Ireland, you'll have everything from hotels, bed and breakfasts and hostels. So you can choose whichever one suits your style. So when is the best time to visit Killarney? Well, that really depends on what you want to experience. My own suggestion, well, I love the months of April, May, and June, and also September, October, and November. They tend to be quieter, 
Coming in July and August, you're going to get a vibrant time as well. You know, a lot of music going on, a lot of festivals in the area. Coming in autumn and fall, which personally is my favorite time of the year. And that's because you're going to see the such difference in colors from leaves, the grasses on the hills. But equally, you'll also get to hear the rutting season. And that is, of course, the mating season of our wild seeker deer, but also our native red deer. So that's our FAQs on Killarney. But what about you? What would you add into this travel guide for this beautiful destination? So please feel free to leave down in the comment section below any kind of questions or suggestions that you might have. Really love hearing your feedback. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video today and found it beneficial. If you have, please, if you could, give a like, subscribe, turn on those notification buttons and leave a comment below. And that's a wrap, everybody. This has been Michael from Wild and Happy Travel. Have a great day. As we say in Ireland, Slawn, which means goodbye.